started bringing the red, full anxiety for me. Yeah. He's just chilling. He's like, you know, Nick, they've been making beer for 2,000 years in clay pots. You're good, buddy. You're good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, back to the brewery editions of the episodes. I'm your not-so-humble host, Carp, and today we are having a socially distanced interview with Nicholas from Chick de Boo. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking time in your schedule to host us today. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm glad that we could finally get this done. We did have it booked before lockdown number two, yeah. uh, but now we're, we're here and we're getting this done. Uh, so you brought me out some beers to try today. What's the first beer I'm going to be trying? Yeah, we have our uh, Chick de Rie, our Pale Ale. Okay. Somebody once said, oh, I think it was untapped, and he's like, ah, une pale ale bien chienne. <laughs> and, I'm, and four out of five stars. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm with you, guy. And I'm sticking to that. So it's a Perfect. simple pale ale, two row, uh, cara foam, just to give it some head. And glacier is the hop. Which nice. Is, you know, it, it grows... Uh, it grows actually a half hour from here, so that's pretty cool awesome. for that. Yeah. So we do uh, long Cheers. distance toast. Yeah, I'm happy you're here. Thank you. Long time coming. Oh, that's smooth for a pale ale. Yeah, that's it. It's a, we call Ooh. it a Canadian pale ale, so it has a bit of that European. It's a little bit more malt backbone than yeah. the hoppiness. That's very nice. Exactly. That's a, that's a good beer. That is solid. I can see why it has a high rating on untapped. Uh, so what's the beer story? What created Tuk de Boo in your mind? Yeah, well, it's all about family and beer. Like, you know, I was in the wine world before and my wife also in the restaurant business. And we were traveling in the States uh, with her family and the waitress comes around and she has a plateau of beer. Like we're talking the foam coming off. We're just done skiing, the toques on the table. And what are we going to call this brewery, you know? And it can be aggressive like you know like big rig yeah you know and we wanted something delicate yet beery and so the, the head of the beer was coming down okay there's something here okay the toque and <laughs> canadiana and so took the blue took the blue <laughs> and then my father-in-law's anglophone and i'm like uh -huh. oh shoot i think we're missing out here yeah and he's like no 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 it's the toque beer yeah and i'm like oh, okay this is it. We're done. <laughs> so we signed all off. We signed off on it that day and be like, okay, well, we haven't found a better yeah. name. This is it. <laughs> Perfect. So it's like, you know, the head of the foam and it gives you that carbonation that you kind of have forgotten about mm -hmm. to give you a big head when you're pouring the beer to not be bloated and all that kind of jazz. And it's kind of stuck to us. This is great. Awesome. That's, I love hearing that. And it's classic, you know, the tick is classic Canadiana. Can't get more Canadian. Yeah, you, can't, you really can't get more and Canadian. the flair of French, it is Canadian. Like, yes. There's always that flair of French that, that kind of just fits in our culture and our way of life. So it's mm -hmm. great. How long have you been uh, in Embern? Like, or how long yeah. have you been open, I should say? Yeah, we opened up, uh, I think I've been selling beer for six years. We brewed first at Kitchissippi. Okay. And then we had higher volume demand. So we went to Big Rig. And that's, that's big. Like, that's like 60 barrels. Uh, that's ridiculous. You know, yeah. it's essentially my whole brewery <laughs> in one batch. And then you have to have kegs and cans at the ready. So it was so intense of a beginning. But it was sun. We were in the Hardin Crown, so like a, a chain of awesome Irish pubs. Mm -hmm. And they were just going through my beer like crazy. And so I went back to the bank and I'm like, okay, well, this whole big idea of a brewery, I think we need to hustle up on this. And they're like, yeah. You do, <laughs> and here we are. So we opened the door here um, five years ago, like okay. just short of five years. So we, we've had the building for five years at the least. And uh, yeah, so it evolved from, you know, um, a brewery, okay, we'll sell to restaurants, we'll sell to LCBOs, which the SAK, mm -hmm. and, and barely anybody will come. You know, nobody likes craft beer, small town. <laughs> we'll, we'll get the two guys who, you know, have nothing to do on a Saturday. And then all hell breaks loose, the door's busy. <laughs> People want t-shirts, people want the red ale. Oh, did you do the wheat beer again? And I'm like, okay, so there's momentum up front. Yeah. So we had the little counter and then the big counter. And then we moved the fridge to be able to have, to host mm -hmm. events. And then we were served with COVID. Yeah. So we kind of yeah. like, all right, <laughs> table's gone, <laughs> chair's gone. Yeah. So that, that's the evolution. That's yeah. five years and 30 <laughs> seconds. Oh, it, uh, you know what? COVID's temporary, I believe. You yeah. know, humanity's gone through this before. It's a hundred year storm, as they say. So we're going to get through this. Obviously, it's put some dents in your plans, but 
I did notice you have a terrasse or patio yes. uh, for those who speak English. So it looks like during the summer, you're probably going to have people. I know, I think it's Broadhead and Stray Dog and guys like that in Orleans are already starting their patio. Yeah. Socially distanced with a fire pit. So it's totally the way to it's, go. It's so coming. last year at, uh, you know, late March was getting nice and people were calling. Oh, can we stop in with our bike buddies and stay outside and be cool? And yeah, so you'd have to go back to the front door and all along the, 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 um, the, the building. Yeah. Then you get to the patio and I can't see you. I don't know what's happening. If you need another beer or yeah. if you're having a fight with your buddy or your wife. And, <laughs> and so this year, like literally, you can see amongst the, uh, the posters, yep. we're going to crack open this wall and put a door, a big window and door cool. to create that kind of more feng shui experience yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where we'll have more natural light, but yeah. also we'll be welcoming the idea of the patio. And we're going to invest in yeah. um, a few more picnic tables and some shade and... That's the chess move for us this year. Yeah. And music. We want to invest back in music. We used to have bands mm -hmm. like, you know, Nathalie that lives on my street. She's in high school. And like, where has she played in the last year? Yeah. Like, online? Well, sheesh. Yeah, the uh, COVID killed the artists. Uh, yeah. At, as uh, myself and my videographer, like our last show was a big concert in Metropolis. And we started hearing like, oh, this virus is coming into Canada. And yeah. a year ago to the date of filming, it was like we were at... Uh, Kanawaki Brewing for their two year anniversary and it's just like it hurts when it shows up on my Facebook I'm like when humanity was still kind of normal yeah before it was like my work is like go work from home my videographer go work from home all our friends go work from home it's like yeah I'll see like, you when I yeah. see you and and thankfully your government uh Quebec government finally switched for some stuff and in some other provinces are just like you guys need to survive deliver do this this yeah. is important so that's kind of one one thing i i run into is uh with roadblocks and difficulties with covid obviously you guys are allowed to deliver which is awesome yeah. right off the bat yeah. we were allowed to we didn't really have to close the first week my wife and i were just like you know having a hundred beers and we don't know what's <laughs> like what's going to happen so we're hung over for a week so we closed <laughs> yeah literally and we had no beer right <laughs> <laughs> Let, we don't advertise it like that, but we had like two dorés left and yeah. like the fridge was empty and like, all right, stop everything. Yeah. Let's regroup. Let's see where this goes in a week. And then my, my Shopify, the app that we have for our online store, which I almost canceled two weeks prior, <laughs> I had 152 orders on the Friday. I'm like, shit, babe. <laughs> like, I think Monday we're going to give her, we're going to can all the beer we have and we're just going to start delivering and I'll call all my buddies and we're going to go move beer yeah. this way awesome we don't have to be exposed at the cash we don't know what's happening we didn't know the virus then yeah. and not that we know much more now but we we didn't know so we said we're not opening but we'll deliver like like madman so i'd have one buddy come in pick up the orders i prepared leave next buddy come in pick up <laughs> the other orders you know rockland cornwall ottawa and then something was like two two three times a week we'd have full picnic table off you go and then that morphed into uh oh we had like a pickup thing and now we are back in the store. So mm -hmm. those, that business kind of shifted back in presence. Uh, what do you call that? Like, uh, en présentiel. Okay. And I hate that word. <laughs> and, and, so, and so it works. And, and then we still get the online orders for people who are quarantining. Mm -hmm. People are just not cool with being out. Yeah. So it's kind of like a beautiful ecosystem that we have now. Yeah, no, I'm definitely, I'm, you know, as soon as, as, soon as I get my shot, I'm, I'm back on the patio with my friends. <laughs> That's it. Like, I'll wear my mask to get yeah. to the patio, but once I'm with my friends and we're all vaccinated and stuff, I can't wait till we get back together yeah, and, yeah. and can enjoy a pint while sitting down without having to, uh, like, some places during the summer in, in Montreal, it was like, you have two hours on the patio, sorry, we have to make room for other customers. I'm very understanding, I get it. Yeah. Uh, but I'll just drink in my backyard. I'll, I'll pick up from my local, uh, beer, well, Depener for us or convenience store, our beer stores. Yeah. I'll just grab there and then I'll go home and drink in my backyard. So. Yeah, see here, you're allowed four people at a table yeah. that don't live with you. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's a little wild west. And you see it, it's happening mm -hmm. in restaurants and pubs, but in the brewery here, we're not, we're not ready. Yeah. We're like, no, you will be welcome outside. Yeah. Yeah, safety first. It's very important. You know, I we're trying so. to we're trying to do our best to curb this, and that's why I reached out to you is because you're in an area that's a lot safer. The numbers are a lot lower, yeah. so I'm gonna I'm not interviewing anybody in Montreal. It's just not safe right now. Fair enough. So yeah, yeah. Awesome. let's try the other beer. Man. Yeah, no, that's, I was just about to ask you. Beer number two. I haven't had it in a while. So that's a Barbe Blanche. It's our wheat beer. I okay. Tell people it's like a baby Barbe uh, Blanche de Chambly, which is kind of where craft beer started for me at Le Quatre Jeudi and. 
in all that's a, <laughs> they would have the grosse bouteille ex literally yeah. this bottle yeah well i'm sure you have blanche de chambly in big bottle but yeah they, we still got know, we still got blanche in, in the, bottles there was no more like communal experience you and your chum are having a pint mm -hmm. a blanche with the big bottle sharing the bottle and it was beautiful the romance behind like just the packaging and the experience mm -hmm. and the fact it's amazing beer cheers Toast. yeah yeah beautiful wheat smell yeah and the wheat yeast really oh, yeah. brings a lot like uh yeah is that is that a little bit of clove i'm getting yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. clove and, and i always i always enjoy wheat beer uh, i know not a lot of people are just well because you're used to hoe garden as your as your wheat beer sure. and that's really not that's not a wheat beer when you no about it's it, so. busy beer there's lots yeah. going on in that beer but even though this one we'd say you're you know put your orange zest here yeah. after a ski day when it's six outside like that's a fantastic yeah. beverage there no, that's that's going down super smooth i, yeah. I always enjoy a wheat it person. has a stupid sales uh, ecosystem like we'll sell a ton in january and it's minus 30 and then <laughs> spring comes around and it's like it's not moving at all and then August comes around. Okay, now it's all blanche. Uh, when, how do I Excel spreadsheet this beer and forecast? Yeah. I do not know. But it's, uh, we, we keep it. Uh, it would have been, my, my dad loved wheat beer, so we made this in his honor. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's a beer that means a lot to us. So there you go. I'm glad you like yeah. it. No, it's great. Uh, when you first kind of moved into this location, was there any resistance from, now you're in a more industrial area, but was there any yeah. resistance from the residentials around the area who are like, ah, we don't want to brew, we don't want to brew pub here. Or... No, I didn't hear any of that. Maybe why? Because there's another brewery in town that opened a week away from me okay. at the same time, literally. And he's more in a residential mm -hmm. area on the main drag, you know, with kids coming in and out with a pub experience. While we are more of an industrial in and out, bring the beer home. We didn't have any of that. And I, before I opened up, I went to see the township, the Russell Township, and I sat down with all the key players there and said, okay, well, I'm going to open a brewery. It's going to be around either here or the other industrial park by the highway. Not sure, but I'm doing this. Okay. So everybody knew and I never blindsided them. And then, you know, when we had to open to do the drains and the floor, I called him, hey, we're going to do it. So he came that day. Like it was, um, I, I didn't want any adversity or yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like this is just beer. So everybody be on board. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Nobody's going to get hurt and yeah. it's going to be lovely you know and it's been good and like even the door i am the township they emailed me the application if you have any questions call me on my cell like totally like oh man that's yeah. that's awesome it keeps going yeah. yeah it's people want quality local beer yeah and that's that's very important so just the city coming up to you and be like yeah here Here's what you need. Just go yeah. sell, make the city money. That's yeah. sounds like what and they want. So. Our license is a uh, manufacturer's license. So we're allowed to essentially what we're drinking now is not a beer. It's a sample. Okay. So we don't have to have food. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if you have a pub or a restaurant, you have to f serve the food thing that still kind of exists in a murky water <laughs> land. But uh, yeah, so we're just offering samples. I could even serve you a pitcher and it's called uh, it's called by the glass license. Okay. Um, but yeah, that being said, we want to bring in some food, some kind of like a, a prepackaged charcuterie plate that I would sell to you and you go outside and you crack it open. There's no manipulation mm -hmm. here. We're trying to keep it at perception as, yeah. as clear and clean as possible for now. And yeah. then we'll see. That's great. Plus I'm sure you have local butchers who would step up and be like, well, sell it. our product, please. You know, yeah. uh, you have a gift bag with, uh, uh cheese and, and meats and stuff in it. So it's like. It's already on the way when you think about it. So. I, yeah, and that package for the Cabana Suc, the Sugar Shack that we're doing a kind of a online concert uh, Saturday the 20th of March. So uh, it will be our first attempt at selling a package box that people can experience while watching the show online at home. Instead, because that's our biggest day of the year. Last year, uh, a weekend ago, a, it was we had 500 people in yeah. here. Yeah. People outside, we had the Sugar Shack experience, live music, one after the other. And one week after, we had to shut down. Yeah, it's, it's... It was an epic gong show. Yeah. It... And then it went from that to nothing. <laughs> yeah. So this year, we're, we're like not making that kind of cash. We're yeah. not making Christmas party money. We're not making the outside festival we have, mm -hmm. the Carnaval in Embrum. Yeah. Uh, not happening, which we were in charge of the big uh, outside night and the pub night we were involved like good all these cash events that were awesome for the community and money and uh, not happening yeah so if i hear the word pivot again <laughs> i'm gonna lose it but we're pivoting uh, yeah 
It, it is important though that you do. Uh, you know, I was I was listening to a show and it's these magicians and they were they work out of Vegas and they were talking about how they have to do a magic show online now and what they do is through a local liquor company they actually sell cocktails at home. Brilliant. Yeah, and I'm just it's like the fact that a lot of places have allowed businesses because we we need local and small to survive. That's it. Yeah. And we've lost way too many businesses during COVID. Yeah. But I believe that we are going to, as Canadians, we're going to get together and we're going to recover. Yeah. So that's, you know, I find that super important. So. Yeah, I think the fiber will get even more uh, tight after the fact. When mm -hmm. we reopen, there'll be a more sense of community, uh, engagement and going out in your community. I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Yeah. Uh, what's beer number three we're going to be trying? Well, that's the staycation, okay. which is more <laughs> a propos this year than ever. But we, <laughs> we, we launched it like three years ago, two, three years ago, in the spirit of people who didn't go down south. Well, here's a taste of uh, luxury pineapple, and uh, with, it's got the Galaxy Op, which is so lovely. Yes. And we never work with it besides for this beer, mm -hmm. so we should change that. Anyway, Just. So, cheers, yes. Mmm. So it's got that nice pineapple and then it goes into all these kind of soft tropical flavors. Yeah. And it's got a nice zing. I think it's, we, uh, we uh, put a magnum mm. in the boil. Yeah. So it gives you that back bitterness. It's but, not overly bitter either. It's like that right level of, yeah. of bitterness. So I call that, I don't know, uh, Ithaca Brewing Company in the States does mm -hmm. a uh, flower power, an amazing IPA, but it'll just rip your face. <laughs> it's a bit stronger. This one is like the baby version yeah. of that, I find. It's got that bitterness, but then it's got all these flavors surrounding it. So we're really happy yeah. with this beer. Like even, I think it's Russian River, they make it, it's called Palette Wrecker, and it's like, nice. I still want to try it. <laughs> even though it's Sign like, me it's up. like 200 IBU or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, I still want to try it. So. I think at 80, you taste yeah. nothing, but anyway. Exactly. Yeah. I love it, yeah. yeah. So this is a fun beer. We make it once a year. Uh, while these other two are kind of staples mm -hmm. of ours. And right now we have a crazy amount of beer because we're not selling half of each batch to restaurants, mm -hmm. which was how we would move beer fast is that half goes to the shelf for customers, half goes to restaurants. So now 100% of my beer is, or used to, go to cans. So we have a lot, then they're going to deplete and we have a, an order or, or a menu offering for the summer, which will be our Antidote, which is a beautiful New England IPA. Okay. Raspberry wheat. And uh, kind of a um, Peroni type lager. Like Italian Pilsner. Pilsner Italian, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, giving you that kind of like clean, but mm -hmm. that zing, a bit of that sazz uh, hop. Yeah. So, so yeah, so we're going to really restrain this to five core beers or five summer beers. This is just crazy. Talk. Yeah. Um, great beer. Great, um, when time. it comes to like your, I mean, I love the whole flannel concept of your design. <laughs> flannel. Uh, yeah. Uh, where does the, the idea of the can designs and the names, where do those come from? Are you, that's you and the wife just shooting back and forth saying, like, here's what the beer should be called. So here's what the design is. Like, where does that come from? On that drive to Lake Placid, uh, we came up with Barbe Blanche. We came up with Gugun Russe, which will be the next beer we'll try. Mm -hmm. The name of the brewery. And maybe I think that's about it. But then we kept the whole, like, French first, English close second yeah, yeah. in the whole lineup as we went along and the knit pattern started with our five kind of core brands and then my brother-in-law Patrick did an amazing job at all these other seasonals and he kept going and on and on <laughs> and all the effort to do this itching, yeah yeah it takes forever because it's not like a cut and paste and if you want a paler blue it's each gosh darn uh. little unit that has to be changed <laughs> so like the ESV like that's just a nightmare yeah and, and it wasn't, you know, we had to adjust in the color. And, but then, then it worked. It worked. It's kind of who we are, what we do. The hops and bros got some hops in the background. Uh, so we just kept doing it. It's kind of our uh, shtick. Yeah, I, I love it. Like you said, you're, you're Canadiana. That's, yeah. You know, and it's the, the flannel sweater, obviously. We're in Canada. It's cold nine months of the year. Yeah. <laughs> this is the type of stuff we got to wear. Then we saw, is it Molson Canadian had that? We went to a hockey game yeah. on a, on a St. Paddy's Day a few, like four years ago. And the, it comes with the knit pattern. Yeah. And then we have a Timmy's cup <laughs> and it has the knit pattern. I'm like, did we start this? <laughs> yeah. Are we so big and yet so small? Yeah, no. Somebody uh, saw it on the internet or whatever and it just blew up. That's great. Do you remember the first beer you ever brewed? Uh, me? Yeah, it yeah. was the Red Ale. Yeah. Okay. So we, I, I started 
being a wine guy, I knew, I, I knew enough that I didn't know. <laughs> so I hired a brewer to set up the brewery, set up the equipment, set up the recipes, and then another brewer, another brewer. And then at some point I'm like, okay, well, I guess if you follow the recipe and you have BME top of the line equipment, at some point you're just kind of making donuts. Mm -hmm. You're kind of following a recipe, the temperatures, don't screw with it and have fun. So brewer goes the next day, I start brewing. Uh, I had a consultant from DME and he kept coming back every year. We just invite him back just to kind of tweak our processes. And he comes and I start brewing the red, full anxiety for me. Yeah. He's just chilling. He's like, you know, Nick, they've been making beer for 2000 years in clay pots. You're good, buddy. you're good. <laughs> and so at noon, like kind of ears on its way, it's in the boil. I had everything figured out. All right, everything was going quite well. And he's like, well, I'm gonna go. I'm like, no, well, we're not done. It's like three steps here. I have no clue. And he's like, no, no, no. You know what you're doing. And he, he, literally, as he's talking, he's leaving. He's like, I'm going to go to Bacanada or something to have a beer with my friend. I'm like, that man, buddy. And, and I finished that beer. And then I've brewed all the beers since. So I think I'm at 200 beers now. I think uh, I need another 1,000 to really know what I'm doing. Uh, but it's, it's been fun. And that's kind of like, would I do that? Would I brew physically, brew at another brewery? I think it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. I it will brew for me at my brewery for the end of times, because it's it's pretty it's pretty gnarly to change yeah. malt. And, and, you know, in 16 days you go from, you know, 13 bags of malt to a finished package, and, and you can tweak and adjust and go with the seasons and buy local malts from, uh, literally from a few hours from here. Like, there's a bit more depth to it than mm -hmm. I may have thought at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. And you mentioned, like, so you haven't done any collabs with anybody? Uh, or... Well, the Hops and Bros, which okay. is kind of a, a blogging group. And he's brewing now for uh, Bench Brewery, okay. Max. Uh, so is that a collab? Maybe not so much, but we've talked to a few breweries, uh, maybe in Quebec, Elmer area, mm -hmm. to see if they'd be up for it. Everybody's kind of busy right now. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely something I'd like to do. Even, maybe not a collab per se, but... We're talking with the Etienne Brûlé and Mario at Castle. Yep. Perhaps there's a beer style we could make that would bring the, the folks from uh, Montreal for their hour and a half drive. Yeah. And we would have a similar beer that you could kind of compare on a passport. Mm -hmm. Kind of an experience. You could kind of bitch and moan who wins the best beer and, you know, kind of thing. And so we're looking at that. Yeah. Is that a collab or like just the plot? Uh I like it. To me, it's friendly competition. Yeah. I, I like but Together, I like we're going to yeah. project that competition. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We're going to make a friendly com competition. Yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. what I like. Like I was telling Mario is um, whenever I hit Ottawa, he's like the stop on the way back because it's the 417 and he's literally right off the highway. Literally. And then yeah. Closer right back than ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I've been trying castles since they were at the bowling alley, as I call yeah. it. So it's, it's crazy. And I, I've had your beers from the LCBO before. That's why it's, okay. you know, I know I know most of your beers from what I'm able to get at the LCBO in Hawkesbury, but I, right. you know, I, I am privy to your beer, thankfully. Yeah. So because of the LCBO. I love the Hawkesbury LCBO because we sell a lot of beer through there and I know at least half of it goes across the border. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my reach I, oh, when are you going to be in Quebec? I'm like, well, I don't have enough beer, one. <laughs> and two, like the taxes I'd have to export to yeah. Quebec gets imported into Quebec. So would you pay eight bucks for this? You know, yeah, one time. But, and also you have so many craft beers. So people who really want my beer, just come to Hawksbury mm -hmm. or come to the brewery. And yeah. Blah, blah. Ah, it's, it's an hour 40 from, you know, Montreal. Yeah. Like almost downtown Montreal, it's less than two hours. So yeah, exactly. Why not? Yeah. If, if you're heading to Ottawa come to here on the way yeah, or, the funny or the way back, not so. funny thing is it's faster to go see a montreal's game than to go see a uh, ottawa so, senators yeah. game from here yeah so that tells yeah. you how close we are to montreal yeah. and how good of a traffic having you know, once you get out of yeah. down the downtown core yeah no that's it the, their stadium in the middle of canada is just terrible that's like just the thing. parking stuff we're and, so sad yeah. anyway um, moving on being a lucky person living in in close to downtown montreal it's like metro habs game Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> pub, yeah, yeah, McLaren's, McLean's, yeah, exactly. McLean's, yeah, uh, McLean's, uh, oh, man, McKibben's. Yes. There's so many options. My wife worked at so. McKibben's. Oh, cool. Uh, Saint Jean there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Very on, awesome. on our honeymoon, I think we stopped in there <laughs> on the way back. <laughs> anyway, so, oh, cool. Uh, so what's this last beer we're gonna be trying here? That's a Gugunrus. Okay. 
uh, which was kind of, it's kind of like our second beer, like Doré and then the Gugunerus, the second one, in LCBOs as well. And it's really, this one, uh, we use a different uh, Magnum that was supercharged. So you get quite a bit of bitterness on the finish on this batch specifically. Um, but you still see, well, the, the juiciness, like this almost like cherry smell, um, that cherry bitterness, and raspberry, and then the malty backbone, and then that hop nice. just kind of zings you right there. Toast. Cheers, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's the beer, yeah. like, that's the consistent, um, I'd say almost even more consistent in sales than the than the doré like this is the the the, the pub you'd have at mcgibbons the, yeah. the pub the pint you'd have at a irish pub with your fish and chip all day long you know <laughs> yeah. like it's uh well that or the esp obviously because you gotta yeah. you want to stick with the whole yes. british thing <laughs> i tell you when that beer runs out i get almost punched in the face like, people <laughs> love it they like come for it like when it's released they'll buy six cases wow for, you know the neighbor and like the the crew yeah and so I say, okay, I agree. You can buy these. Yeah. One batch, buddy. So <laughs> six is good, right? And it runs out. It, it creates a mo It's a fun beer. This yeah. one, for sure, we're putting on the annual roster. Um, yeah, quite a few are not going to make it this summer. Really mm. want to keep it tight. But then that ESB bring the yeah. fall, right? September, October. No pumpkin beer. Yeah. Wait, fuck it. Anyway, pumpkin <laughs> beer. You know, you'll sell to the passionate people a six pack. <laughs> like they'll come and they'll call and they'll come and they'll they'll be so excited they buy a six pack. Like no no no, for me to be able to make a yeah. beer in fifteen hundred liter batches, you need to buy a few six packs. Yeah, you need to get like at and least a everybody flat. Everybody needs to buy a six pack. So that <laughs> beer is just I try every year to market it and sell it early and the, nah, it's just uh, yeah. Well, it's the same thing with uh, ma like you know your maple rye beers. It's they're limited. People aren't gonna. Yeah. Shrink them as often. It's just seasonal beers, you know. Somebody's not going to grab one and hold on to it for a full year, like something like a pastry stout or something that can age. You're not going to let that sit. Yeah. So. so our maple beer, when we have the event, we sell out one full batch that day, 1,500 liters. One. We have a pallet and it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> now this year, this beer, this maple beer, we made at Christmas one batch and it's gonna be okay for this event that we're hosting on the weekend and this virtual event mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's definitely not the same excel spreadsheet uh than the previous <laughs> years for sure that's great uh okay so uh when there's a whole lot less COVID in the world and you have some downtime what's a beercation that you've never been on that is like i need to go to yeah. here for beer yeah you said vermont we talked about vermont earlier and just like, uh, you know, can I just say, I felt like we did some travels in the States mm -hmm. early on because of uh, my sister-in-law was Ithaca. And we've been down to see Dave Matthews and go see some breweries. But I haven't done that in the Quebec, in the Quebec side of things mm -hmm. like uh, Charlevoix and uh, where are we doing? Like deep into deep, like like Quebec City, like Trois Rivières, places exactly, like that. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like Percy, like Pit Caribou. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, yeah. Amazing beers. Yeah. I've been to their pub in, in Montreal or whatever, their charcuterie pub. Yeah. And it was great. And I'm like, wow. That, like, it seemed like the next step would have been, okay, let's take the kids, get a bed and breakfast yeah. or whatever, rent a camper. And that kind of just got put on, not going to happen, hold. Yeah. And, and here we are. But per se, we used to go as kids every couple of years. You take the drive and all that. How great would that be yeah. with, a, with a vision of seeing all these breweries? Yes, Pit Caribou, but I know there's three or four just along that kind mm -hmm. of side of the world. Yeah. And you could just, if you Quebec want to kick down to the Maritimes and yeah. try all their craft beer too. Yeah. From, that's a new scene so, too. Cause yeah. when I went, when I spent a lot, I spent a lot of time in the, in the Maritimes in near Caraquette area down to Moncton and at the last OCB in Toronto, which I think I was four years ago, I met all these kids that were opening up breweries and and we never followed up. We never got to get together. We ne I never got to see their brewery. So that'd be a nice long trip. Yeah. I'd take the summer off. And that's that's something ultimately thing. I'd love to do is rent the, the drivable RV with the car hitch in the back. Yeah. And just start from one end of Canada, make my way oh, over. That'd be great. And my way back for beer. So that'd be I'd, great. 
I think it'd be a great journey. Obviously, I would have to win the lottery or something because yeah, I can't yeah. have a real job while doing that. So I, I think, like, compare if I could do it in the States or Canada, I think it'd be clearly Canada for its youthfulness mm -hmm. and the innovation that the, everybody's coming up with. Yes, sours and all that kind of stuff, but just even their pale ales, everybody, how they're doing it, what's their vision and which equipment they use, how they go about crafting and cans, bottles. Like, it's our economic situation the can situation the shortage and yeah and bottles are kind of like just there it's like a riesling you know it never sells more than eight percent of your wine list but it's there so bottles are eight percent of like the beer situation like how does it become more or does it need to or mm -hmm. anyway i'd love to have these conversations with other brewers that yeah. we're not allowed to see right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately. I know there's a few guys in Quebec who are collabing and you just see them like brewing with their masks on. I'm like that, you know, we are being safe. Obviously we only took our masks off for the interview, but it's, uh, it's the fact that I'm watching these guys just sweat and like with the mash time, <laughs> just face yeah. mask. I'm like, I, could, I, don't, I couldn't picture myself doing it. I'd love to brew a beer for what the, you know, with the show of mine, but it's, it's what it is, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've brewed with masks on at the beginning and then I only brew with uh, one guy from time to time. It's always the same. He's part of kind of my world, my bubble. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's dynamic to go up and down those stairs 150 times. Yeah. It's hot. <laughs> yep. Anyway, but it worked. Like if yeah. surgeons have been doing it for 100 years, then we're okay yeah. making a, a little beer. Exactly. Here. So awesome. Uh, so I, I've added this uh, post COVID. What's, mm -hmm. uh, what's next for the Chick de Blue brand? Yeah, well, you mentioned, well, we, dis we discussed the patio, mm -hmm. the door, like the, bringing back live events is going to be huge. And then morphing into more of a, like a food, <clears throat> maybe not a food restaurant, but a food and experience. And, and less focus on LCBOs and, and pushing out the back door, kind of creating that, that memory for people. We're going to just keep pushing that. Yeah. Uh, that being, are we going to put a whole field of hops in the back? Or are we going to do a, an education emporium? <laughs> Not sure, but we're really looking at the uh, people from Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto to come and, and create, live something that we created that doesn't really exist anywhere else. Yeah. Just make, make your way to Emburn, basically. Yeah. Know, so that's and so there's fun. other breweries that mm -hmm. are awesome nearby. So uh, some of all of our parts really makes it attractive for people to go for a drive. Yeah. In their bubble, anyway, post bubble. Yeah, thing. yeah. Well, that's uh, that's that's why I asked. Like <laughs> post COVID, what's kind of yeah. your thing? And and you, like you said, you're gonna expand the patio. You're gonna add the charcuterie boards and things like yeah. that. So it it's simple, but it's it's out there. It's something that you guys say you you sound very passionate about. Obviously, so yeah. it's it's very important to you that. You need to keep the customer coming. Uh, do you see deliveries continuing post COVID? I think so. I think there's always going to be now that, uh, you know, a convenience for one, but also the people who are not so comfortable with going out yet. Yeah. And that could be years for some, and it could be last week for others. <laughs> so, um, so I'll, we'll be like very respectful of that. And, and just even putting beer in the trunk, you know, or uh, facilitating in mm -hmm. the contactless service. I think that's here to stay. Yeah. Why not? It's cool, man. Yeah. You drink at home. That's the whole point of our beers. I bring it home, make a campfire, have a hundred beers. Yeah. Maybe two. <laughs> um, we're, we're delighted to be kind of like able to do yeah. that with our platform and, and who we are. Yeah. No, when I found out that Ontario was delivering beer, just my jealousy yeah. went like through the no, roof. Well, well, why was it so complicated? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, you just take the beer, I give you a receipt, you the, pay. It's kind of fair game, isn't it's it? It's the convenience stores and the SAQs. Are right, 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 right. Because you had all that going Yeah, we had, We already had Dep, Dep and Ur deliveries, but those are your, your BMCs, your big boys. Yeah. Uh, and we only just started getting, not everywhere does it, but um, Boutique Cheers, Decapsuleur, I know Malte Hops and Verdun, they were delivering for a bit, uh, Decapsulaire and Malte Hops more so during the summer with biking. Yeah. So that, you know, the people working there were staying healthy and, and right. going out for bike rides and stuff. But uh, I know Boutique Cheers, which they just opened their second location, they they actually deliver, which is good because okay. early on I also had no idea what's going on. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not playing with this virus in any yeah. way. No, I, no. I have two elderly parents. That's the last thing I need. Yeah. So I ordered beer. Yeah. And ding dong and the guy's wearing a mask. And he's like, Michael. I'm like, yep. Yeah. He's like, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, What's huh. great about us delivering the beer, if it's not me, then it's my buddy Brian who's delivering it. 
And so my margins are still alive. Yeah. While if it's through the LCBO or a dépanneur, mm -hmm. let's say, that would deliver, then you lose all your margin to them. Yeah. So we're kind of happy with this model yeah. right now. Uh, it's been shaken and we figured it out, but it works. You order a 2 4, I'll make a few bucks. Yeah. You know, and yeah. if it were through the LCBO, I make no money. It's kind of a marketing neutral type of uh, program that we're in here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we appreciate the sale online as much as live in the time that we're in now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, like you said, you converted from literally kegs to cans. Yeah. And everything's that was crazy at the beginning. Everything's been going crazy. We, we so. didn't ramp up because it was, you know, you could smell on the horizon was St. Patty's Day. Yeah. So you're thinking kegs, we're going to start kegging. And just before we're like, okay, we're going to put this thread in, can in kegs. We're like, no, oh, everybody calm down. Yeah. <laughs> and we could see that coming and, and we put everything in cans. That's when we took that week off. That was yeah. just such a good chess move. Yeah. And, and then we had very little ca kegs had to go into cans because we didn't end up ditching any beer. We put the kegs back into the bright tank make sure it was uh, stabilized mm -hmm. or carbonated properly and not oxygenated and tasting delicious. Yeah. Put it into cans, sell it. And, and that's when all hell break loose. So we sold a lot of beer fast. People drank beer. So that beer stayed fresh yeah. and was drank. It was awesome. Yeah. Best case scenario. No, I, I you know, uh, I find a lot of my fellow Canadians were, were all about it's time to support local. You say support local at the beginning of the, and still going. We had people come in here as like, I don't like beer, but my wife said to drop a hundred bucks here today to support local because <laughs> we want you to be here when it's over. And like, man, that was like the second week that we yeah. could open. I, I was just like, it's emotional stuff. Like the guy shows up literally to make, you know, tap on the back situation. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. And all our fans are our community is as really engaged with us and kept going. Like, I don't see... Like, you know, whatever. It's just yeah. been very positive in this situation. Have, have you had con converts? Have you had, you know, BMC guys who are like, oh, I only drink like Coors. And yeah. you're like, try this. Yeah. Try and, this. you know, I thought it would segue into the Doré. Yeah. Like the easy going. And most of those I find have went into the red. Cool. They skipped one yeah. level. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. I think so. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, cool. I have no other questions for you today. This has been a fantastic talk. I really appreciate once time taking your time and your schedule to speak with us today. Uh, let my viewers know where they can find Thank you guys. You. Yeah, well, um, in Ontario, we ship across Ontario right now for free. Come by the brewery if you're not from Ontario <laughs> or if you're from Ontario. 189 Bay Street in Embram. We're behind the Independent. And uh, in LCBOs, we have the Doré and the Red. But we'd love to see you here. We have the patio. This summer, I'm sure you're going to be, everybody's going to be allowed to go for a drive. So <laughs> you, we saw it a lot last summer. A lot of people in Montreal losing their minds, coming for a little drive. You're welcome. Awesome. If you're allowed, you're welcome. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, social media. Yeah, we have our Facebook, Instagram, all Chuck de Brou kind of driven Twitter as well. Maybe less active on Twitter lately. But Instagram, Facebook, that's where we're at, Chuck de Brou. Awesome. And the for the website. Very cool. So come and check these guys out when you have a moment. Uh, for those viewers who are within reasonable driving distance, obviously, uh, come during the summer. They have a lovely looking patio from what we can see, even though it's snow covered right now during the interview. <laughs> uh, as for us, it's at All Beer Inside everywhere. AllBeerInside.com is the website. And as I say in the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap.